Second coming backup request. Hi everyone, this is What's It Fox Gaming. I'd like to showcase a new build that I've come up with that I like to call the poor man's dilemma and that's by no means a negative thing um, the whole purpose of this build in this video is to give everybody an entry level way to get into the dark zone and conflict with minimal investment in putting your build together you don't have to worry about you know, specific gear sets too much here or certain weapon types it's just a, uh, a simple collection of different items that make it actually a very strong build and in, in some ways as strong as my negotiator's dilemma build so i will go through the build uh, and then what we'll do is we'll load into a conflict game uh, and i'll try and showcase that build to the best of my abilities now as with my previous videos i do tend to just do this all from a single live stream um i am not particularly interested in editing these videos you know this is just a little side thing for me um during the, the covid lockdown crisis uh, so I, you know, I'm not too fussed about sort of cutting and pasting in some some montages and so on. I do see that quite a lot on YouTube, and uh, you know, I'm not really a fan of of watching a build video um, from from a content creator on a game that I like, only for them to show a montage of their best clips because that's not a true reflection of the build, and they're not highlighting the weaknesses. And you do need to know where the weaknesses of a build is, um, as well as the strengths, so you know when uh, when to play it, uh, when not to play it, and how to play it as well. But let's get into the build. Let's, let's go through the pieces here. So this is all very um, easy to, to mix around. Um, nothing is too set in stone here. What I've decided to go for is a three blue, three red build. So sort of hybrid of armor and, and weapon damage. And I feel like this is the perfect combination to run with this build. It works beautifully in the dark zone as well as in conflict. Um, of course, the dark zone, you definitely need high armor. So you could even consider switching to four armor pieces. But, you know, th this is a really good sweet spot, I, I believe. What you do really want to keep to with this build, you know, most of it is open um, for change. You do really want to keep the Providence, at least if you're going to run it with ARs, which is also one of the other things that I will recommend that you do. Um, the, th the three piece Providence is just too strong with the headshot damage, the critical hit chance, and the 15% the critical hit damage. You know, the purpose of this build is to be tanky whilst offering high weapon damage combined with high critical hit chance and damage. So not only can you take a lot of incoming fire, but you can dish it out as well. Um, it's just that nice middle ground to be able to to come to play any conflict or or DZ game without worrying too much about um, you know the weaknesses of some other builds that are out there. So the other three pieces that I've opted for here, uh, this is totally up to you. Fenris I've got here, um, Badger Tough Gloves for the shotgun, and a Yarl piece just here. I have opted for an AR uh, and a shotgun. You know, I don't have to follow this. You know, the shotgun I rarely use. It's just there to swap on to if I if I get low on ammo for this weapon just here, uh, my my P416, um, and it is really good close close range. Admittedly, with high crit chance and damage, shotguns come with inherently high damage to armor. So I quite like that. But um, use what you're comfortable with. Two assault rifles is absolutely fine and possibly even stronger because you can just stick to Fenris. And then have maybe one Seska and one Gripo for the extra critical hit chance of damage. So, <clears throat> you know, you're not you're not limited to, to what I've done here. Um, it's more important to pick weapons that you're comfortable with. But if you can, try and run this with an AR. They're just too good in conflict at the moment. They cover pretty much all ranges apart from, you know, extremely far. And really, there's no point in engaging in that sort of range anyway, because they'll just get revived. So, um, yeah, this is, this is a good combo, I think. Um so what I've tried to do here is get my armor as high as possible on these three pieces and then the uh, other three of course as high weapon damage as possible as well. The non-core attributes I've gone for explicit, um, exclusively critical hit chance and damage across all of them apart from the Fenris and that's only because this is a terrible role and I've not been able to find a, a new version of yet. You do not want to make the mistake that I have made, which is re-rolling a core attribute of a chest or a backpack. <coughs> Excuse me. And the reason for that is that there's just more things to worry about to get this piece right. I'll give you an example. If, um, let's say, this YAR piece here was uh, Fenris, and it came with weapon damage, critical hit chance, critical hit damage. Now, that's only three things that I need to worry about, so I would just re-roll the weapon damage into armor. Um, I probably have very high armor there and still retain the critical hit chance and damage whilst keeping the 10% the, the auto rifle benefit that Fenris inherently offers. By doing that on the chest, you're leaving yourself for, in for a harder time because there are more things that need to be right 
if you're going to re-roll the core attribute. You've still got the two non-core attributes, but you also have a mod slot and you have a talent. So you would need all four of those to be in a good place to re-roll the um, core attribute from red to blue or however way around you want to do it. So what I've done here is is not great. Um, you know, this was part of an earlier experiment and I wanted it with status effect as well. Um, so for that build it was fine, but for this build, an entry level build, you want to keep your backpack and your chest as whatever core attribute they come with and worry about re-rolling the talent or possibly the attributes. Just try and get as much crit quit chance and damage as you can. You are aiming for as close to 60% as possible and then just after that just focus on critical hit damage. Um, try and save your armor mods for critical hit damage because they can go up to 12%. With your weapons, they're generally capped at about 5%. So you try, you want to really put your critical hit chance stuff on your mods, on your weapons. And you want to put your critical hit damage on your armor pieces. Um, so, yeah, with regards to these two just here, I wouldn't necessarily worry about it being the other brand of weapon that you're using. You know, a Seska and a Grouper would be better, and they're very, very easy to farm. Providence, the reason I've gone for the three piece here is it's the most coveted DPS set in the game. Very, very easy to get hold of. You know, you've got to do is go into your targeted loot, find where it's dropping. Uh, currently, Manning Zoo for me, which is really good. Uh, if it's invaded, you can just switch it over. If it's open world, that's even better because you can just reset your control points. It's super, super easy to farm, and there's a high chance that if you play PvE, you've already got a set anyway. The problem with something like Negotiator's Dilemma and um, True Patriot, yes, they're both meta at the moment, but you know, if I was missing a Negotiator's Dilemma helmet, for example, I'd have to come into Dark Zone or whatever mission it was on. There's about 10 different sets in the game at the moment, and I needed just a helmet. Well, that's not going to work. With this, there's more likely to be a 1 in 6 chance of your provenance if I needed the helmet for, for that. So it's just, it's just easier to farm for non-gear sets for this particular build. The talents that I've opted for here are um, Breakable, um, which is best on high armor builds, and Perfect Vigilance. Now, I know I said this is an entry level build that you can get started to come into conflict, and Perfect Vigilance being a named backpack on the gift, uh, called the gift, that's limited to just the Dark Zone and DZ proficiency caches. Uh, you know, that sounds hard to farm. It kind of is. Just use a standard Vigilance. You don't have to use the, the named one. I just had this anyway, and you know, it, the only real difference is it um, disables the buffer for four seconds on the non-name version. So it's um, that's you know, not the end of the world. A lot of people have farm for that backpack anyway, um, just because it's it's best in slot for DPS builds. So if you have it, by all means use it. Unbreakable, yeah, this is this is just a fantastic perk. It's a get out of jail free card, and because it's percentage based, the higher your armor, the more value you're going to get out of this piece. So don't really run it on low armor builds because it, it will do nothing. You're better off running possibly efficient or even vanguard, like I do on my negotiators build. But yeah, this has 1.3 million armor in PvP, so um, <clears throat> Unbreakable is going to give you back you know half of that straight up if I get shot every 60 seconds, which is always nice. With regards to the talents on your guns, again, you know, just use what you can. This is the whole point of this build is to be an entry level build. Um, I do nearly as much damage and as many kills with this as I do with my negotiators build, which seems crazy because that build is my favourite and very strong. But the way that I play mine is pretty much all reds and just rely on the vanguard shield. So a lot of the time I'm in cover and hiding. With this build, you don't need to do that because you have the high armour. <coughs> So you don't need to worry about hiding away so much. You've got more uptime. You're going to get more kills and damage as a result. The skills, again, totally up to you. Um, shield is my absolute favourite. I, I use this all the time. It's just too good not to use, I think. And again, this is based off of your armour. You'll see here, mine is tier 3. So I just get more health, uh, more shield health. Um, if you run this with firewall, then you get the, excuse me, the striker shield, which is fantastic because you get a damage buff as well. So that's always really nice, but if not, just run the Crusader shield. Secondary skill I have on a remote pulse, apparently. Um, it doesn't make a difference. Again, use what you want. Uh, if you're looking just to get into conflict with this build, I would recommend the shield and the EMP jammer, which comes under pulse. So I'm just there, because this wipes out um, all skills. Sometimes it doesn't quite hit shields, but it certainly hits level 6 turrets. Uh, bleed hives, if you see a seeker mine chasing you, just pop it off real quick, gone. 
I'm not sure why I'm running this. I think I was testing something out, but let's stick with it. Why not? Let's have a bit of fun with it. You can really play this how you want. So as I say, always aim to get your stats to similar to mine here. You know, try and get over 150 for your crit hit damage and you want to hit as close to 60 as possible. That's the most important thing there. I play this build quite aggressively. Um, you know, you are quite tanky with that 1.3 mil armor, but you don't want to play crazy. Use your shield to supplement existing cover as opposed to replace it entirely. So you still want to play your corners, uh, use your shield, and then if your shield does break for whatever reason, you're still relatively close to cover so that you can, you know, you can get back into there. With regards to specialization, um, Firewall I still feel is the strongest. Uh, if you're relatively new to the game and come into conflict, you might not have it unlocked yet unless you've gotten the season pass. If that's the case, you've got a few choices. Uh, the Demolitionist, the Grenadier um, talent or specialization tree is very good. Um, you know, that allows you to absorb a grenade every 60 seconds. It gives you extra damage to targets out of cover. Uh, the health pack is pretty good. Uh, there's one other thing on it that I, I think it was the grenades, but... Uh, yeah, that's a really good choice as well. Um, survivalist is good if you're going to run a status build. You know, you're not limited to firewall. Just firewall is particularly strong because the health pack is the best in slot by a country mile with that heal over time. Um, and you set people on fire when they break your armor, which does work through Unbreakable, by the way. Um, so, yeah, that's that's always going to be my choice of PvP until they nerf it. And I strongly, strongly hope that they do. It's too good. It needs a nerf. You know, there's no other way to look at it. I don't know how they can nerf that health pack, but they absolutely need to. <coughs> oh, goodness, we have two true Patriot Pesty guys on our team. Oh, three! Oh, wow. Okay, I'm the only person not using it. Amazing. This is conflict for you, boys and girls. You will see this a lot. High armor um, true Patriot tanks with pestilence. I'm not going to go into why it's good because I don't like it as a build. I think it's the single worst meta that's ever existed in the division history. Um, and yes, I'm including Division 1 there. Um, I'll let you I'll let you look at other content creators videos of that if you want to see why it's good. Defeat the enemy before your reinforcements are spent. So we've got Skirmish. Now normally with my relatively tanky build I'd be taking point here, but as I've got some uh, some TP guys with some big armor, I might just sit behind these and let them be bullet sponges as they so love doing. Rogue fixer drone detected. Right, let's try and play to this pulse of strength. I'm going to try and sit relatively close to it. Detected. Pretty sure I saw a guy just behind this middle cover here. Rogue seeker mine detected. Rogue striker drone detected. Hmm. Did do a huge amount of damage to that guy, but I did miss most of my shots. What's this turret shooting at? There we go, that guy got dropped and I've taken very minimum amount of damage there, which is good. Let's go help these guys out. by himself so yeah so there you go you see with the shield there how much damage that does that was crazy damage <coughs> I've still taken hardly any, uh, any damage myself yet so that's that's the beauty of this build I know my teammates are absolutely wrecking which with true patriot pestle that you're going to oh this guy just got stuck in cover that sucks for him um but yeah, it, you know, if I didn't have these guys with me, this, it still puts out enough damage to, if they've got high armor, make them panic, and if they haven't, to, well, make them die, basically. Let's get this, uh, this out of here, because no one's going to be expecting a remote pulse. Agent down. Boost. About to come on. Is this guy going to peek his head? It'd be silly not to. It'd be silly to do so. Goodness, why did that guy just sit there like that? But yeah, I mean, that gave you a great example of just how much to build this. 
You may notice I'm not even paying attention to this um, drone. It's quite common in conflict for people to use level 1 drones, these little assault drones. Honestly, they're like a mosquito, they do no damage at all. They're just there to distract you, just ignore them entirely. If you happen to have a. Um, Again, if you happen to have a uh, EMP jammer, which you probably should be running fair, use it on them, but I mean you really don't have to worry about them at all. Goodness, this is crazy this game. I might actually just play a second game after this because I do want to showcase some of the weaknesses of this build as well, but I've not really had a chance to do that yet. So I may just play uh, play a second game and maybe halfway into that. I don't want the video to be too long as we're going to be up to probably 17 or 18 minutes by the time this game ends. Rogue drone detected. It's quite nice playing with this pulse though. It's, um, yeah, I'd always encourage, if you're not 100% serious about conflict, just playing with different skills. You're not limited to the defaults that not a lot of people use. So we can get this guy up. Ooh, no. He did not stand a chance there. Do so you see how distracting that drone is? But once you know what it means, um, it doesn't work. It won't have bother you at all. It's a good stick. He's stuck in the right in place there. But luckily, because of my high armor, my shield is quite tanky, and I've still not lost it. I really should have done by now, to be fair. Okay, you know what, I think we'll call it there. I think that was a good opportunity to, yeah, to show off the build there. So, as you saw, when you have an opportunity, you can drop someone very quickly. If they can get into cover, then, you know, that's fair enough. You won't ever burn somebody down like you would a, a negotiated set where you can just shoot somebody else and finish the kill. Again, it wouldn't surprise me if they nerfed that in the future. If you don't already know, um, you spread 60% of all critical hit damage to all marked targets and with the backpack it's 100%. In my opinion that should be nerfed to 25 and 50% respectively. Um, it's too strong at the moment uh, and, and that's kind of why I'm, I'm playing around with non-meta builds at the moment because you can do almost as well with just a little bit of extra <coughs> brain power and skill. And that's not a dig at people that use those builds. Uh, you know, If you're serious about conflict, use meta builds, you'd be silly not to. They're in the game and it's not exploiting. Um, but yeah, you know, I feel like if you use a non-meta build, you do have to think about it just a little bit more. Uh, you know, think about your positioning, pay attention to your opposition, to what your teammates are running. If you're high armor, you should be leading the way. If you're low armor, you should be at the back of the pack. Um, think about the map layout, where they spawn, all, all things like this. Um, so, and that's why I like playing those other builds, because they really engage your brain a bit more, make the game a bit more challenging. I finished that game on 9 kills and 0 deaths, and that was with TP tanks on my team, so, um, you know, I think that, that highlights just how good this build is. As you saw, my accuracy there wasn't amazing, um, but yeah, finished on 19 mil damage as well, which is the highest in the lobby, so it just goes to show you don't have to use Negotiators and True Patriot, but by all means, if you want to do so, feel free. Uh, I'm sure they'll be nerfed at some point in the near future anyway, so we might as well enjoy them whilst they're still up. So we'll call the video quits there. Um, I do appreciate you sticking through to the end. Um, I, you know, a like and a subscribe if you do like the content goes a long way for me. As I say, this is just a, the whole Twitch and YouTube thing is just a little side project for me. I'm not looking to take it full time or anything, but I'm going to be releasing quite a few more build videos. Uh, I have a an interesting trauma video that I'll be releasing soon. Um, I've got some nice gameplay footage of a negotiator's dilemma game where I got 15 kills in 6 minutes without dying, it was a crazy game, I'll get that posted pretty soon, um, I've got an SMG build that I want to test as well, uh, Unwavering is a perk that is completely slept on and is really strong, so I'll be posting those, but yeah, let me know in the comments what you think, if you would change anything about my playstyle, my build, um, if there's anything that you'd like to see, any builds that you've got in mind that you think could work play this game a lot so I've got a ton of stuff in my stash I could probably slap something together and, and release a little video for you just let me know